quite a slope, eh? It's the comeback thing that I'm worried about. Look here. And we're not in a four-wheel drive. I'll tell you what, these guys organised us a campsite. Fantastic. What is this? Wow! Wow! This is your camper's hot. Wow! Yeah. Got a bit of a setup, but just I just want to put it on record that this we uh, rented from Dollar Thrifty. It's a really good deal for 30 days. It's 55 dollars, approximately Canadian. And after 30 days, we've extended it by five days, and they just upped the rate to uh, to 75 bucks a day. So suddenly, once they got you hooked in, they raised the price on you. Not smart, Dollar Thrifty. This is not how you get people to stick around for customers to be there. But the idea is that we're doing van lifing in South Africa and there's a lots and lots of interesting gear that makes your life a little simpler without making any modifications to the van. It looks a little like a dog's breakfast at the moment because the main idea is that you're trying to keep all your cooking stuff in the back so it can easily come out and then all the things that are valuable staying in front. Are you thirsty? That's where you start, the two cowboys lifestyle. So we got ourselves some good glasses. We got our beers, our trusty bottle opener. Don't fear, we got organized for that one too. Ta-da! Good, so you're going for naked ale, weekend yep. special. Uh, weekend special. That's a nice beer. Mm. You can go with all kinds of packaging stuff but we decided the toolbox will do the trick for us so this is where all our cutlery is in and uh, easy done okay next let me walk you through the the basics of how it it's operating number one is when you drive because this is not packed like a normal RV when you drive and you hit the brakes everything's gonna come for the back of your head mm -hmm. and when you take off everything's gonna hit the back rear window so um, you need to pack it so that it doesn't move around. That's the reason why it's dog's breakfast, because everything is tightly packed. Um, but we've got some structure in here. So, beer. This is the stuff you're going to use a lot for cooking. At least when you're a cowboy. Okay? So, on top is all our sauces, spices, piri piris. So, everything you need for cooking. And then, in the second level... This is where all our dry goods are. So this is our garlic, our potatoes, and all the all the dry uh, vegetables. Deer is really the stuff you need to offload first. You, you need to get that closer to you. At the, so the beer gets replenished quite often, so we do that. Uh, our food boxes get replenished quite often, so that's nice and close at hand. Our, our water, just because sometimes you want to wash some stuff. Um, and then a, a very important one, which is our cool box. That's close at hand because you have to every once in a while fill that up with ice so we made that pretty accessible as well and at the same time our cooking utensils on the right hand side just to keep everything nice and and, and close together and uh safety first here's our here's our beautiful propane and that's in a nice crate as well so the idea is obviously stuff that you offload quick that's going to be first and uh easiest to get to this is logic this stuff gets offloaded at the campsite then the cooking stuff and the cool box gets moved closer to the back. You open that up, you've got all your, all, your, all your tools with you. And it stays in the van. You don't have to struggle to pack it up and pack it in every time. But most of this stays in the van. Because when you need it, take it out. When you're done, you put it back in. Table. You can never have too little table space if you are busy cooking and packing. And this is... Ta-da! And I don't think this even costed us 50 bucks, to be honest with you. It was like really like 25. I think a Canadian tire, you buy these also for cheap, cheap. Table's out. Chairs are out. Now we can unpack. Next thing that comes out is our foodies. That's it. Stuff for washing. This is our vinegar solution. And we have a little washing sink here. I'm just gonna move this over. A little washing sink, a little spray with soap in it. Done. Ready to do your kitchen. 
another bit of advice, top tip for cowboys. When you use this hot kitchen sink of yours, the water keeps dripping on the ground and it keeps splashing on your feet. So we decided just to use one of these nice plastic jobbies and it'll keep the water and you can discard it afterwards. Um, if there was power, you'll connect the power so that you can get that going, but I think we're good. All you have to do is you pull the cooler box closer, like that. You pull your cooking utensils, which we'll go through in a moment, and you're pulling your braai utensils closer as well. We ended up getting two of these crates. Um, one for heavy stuff, one for light stuff. Heavy stuff, this is, the, this is where we keep our cast iron. We ended up with nice big uh, pan. Easy, easy little pan for the garlic. And a little Dutch oven. This is for, we don't really do the bread, but you can do your lamb, your casseroles. Those are three most important pieces of cooking. Um, if you do need a grit, you can rub, rub it up with that one. Uh, obviously, cast iron is hot, so we got ourselves a silicone glove. Um, in case we need to... Yeah, we'll get to that later. It just makes so much sense to have a serious grid for your cast iron. There you go. And this is, this is the thing we cook on. Um, look at that. Look at that. It's, it's a beauty. And obviously it's not going to work on a plastic table, and we discovered that later on. But it is just excellent to get yourself organized for cooking. Look at that. Everything is just about cast iron. So I think 24 bucks. So don't go Teflon. Do I mean, we can talk about cast iron all, all day. Um, this will probably outlive the cowboys here in South Africa. And it's going to stay behind here because we're going to keep on. Same with a little Dutch oven. I have a Dutch oven from my grandma that uh, travels through the family. This cowboy at one time nicked it. And then I nicked it back. He's, um, I think it came with a Groot Trek. In 1890. Still going. Still going like this. So, um... Probably, I can't remember, probably another 20 bucks or 25 bucks for the cast iron. I think this thing costed us about $30. Uh, so for all in all, 70, 80 bucks, you got yourself a whole kitchen going. All right. So I mentioned we are two of these. The ones for the heavy stuff, the other ones for the light stuff. Um, braai tongs. You get a lot of braai tongs in South Africa and there's all kinds of McGafters. We like something very simple, which is a heavy industrial jobby like this, because you can stir with it, you can scoop with it, you can whatever, it works. So we, because the cowboy and I can't always agree on what we're cooking, I got him his own one, he can do his own thing. Once we're done with cooking, it goes into our, our trusty pan, some mixing bowls, uh, egg flipper, cutting board's always a good idea. Okay, obviously we've got two, one for veggies, one for meats. Otherwise, uh, when you cross your cutting board, you end up in, a, in a, that little place there at the back. And then, um, this is what we eat on. We like eating on cutting boards because it presents well for a camera, but it's a lot easier to clean as well. Same idea as the cast iron, you just put some oil on it after you gave it a good scrub and you're good to go. So that's really it. We've got our, where's our tools? I mean, knives and forks, there's not much to see there. A couple of steak knives, uh, spoons, and it goes into a little toolbox. No, nice fork spoons, done. And, a, and a, a cheese grater, which we also double up as a collie grater, carrot grater, all the other graters. It's a great grater. You need a really good cool box. We toyed around with the idea to buy a, uh, a cooler that um, works with electricity, one of these camping coolers. Um, they're a little dear, a little expensive considering that we're not here for long periods at a time. It actually works out better to buy one of these. Chuck two or three bags of ice, which cost you about a dollar a bag here. It's really cheap and keep this thing going. And it's been awesome, even with, you know, temperatures of 30, 35 degrees Celsius. Uh, those three bags of ice can keep up to three days. And uh, the, here's the key, the trick though, I'm going to show you this. Because the ice keeps melting, you put your stuff in little bags like this, little, little uh, sealed containers like these, so that it doesn't get wet and it stays in the, in the cooler box. Even the sauces you open up goes in there so it can stay nice and dry inside your containers while this is actually basically an ice bath. And we just keep, you know, either drain the water out, put some new ice in, and it keeps your stuff nice and cool. And you don't die from food poisoning, and you got cold beer. I don't know tainting. 
I've never tented. This is the first time in my life tenting. And we ended up with this, it's called ripstop canvas, essentially. And all it is, it's a scotch guarded material, so it's waterproof. And if it tears, it'll actually stop tearing. But I'm not selling tents. But for me, this sets up no time. When you have the choice of sharing that van, which is a lot smaller than the North American vans, or having a bit of privacy in a tent and traveling in the van, then we travel in the van and the cowboy has his privacy and I've got my tent. One of the first blogs I wrote was van lifing, or, or van life, such a cliche. We don't want a van, van life is, can you see my G-string? Can you see the ocean? All that crap that goes on with van life. We're not, we're touring in a van. And I said South Africa's got lots of potential to do that because there's so many things you can see along the road. You need to discover places. And so far in the first few weeks, we've been hosted very kindly by our good friends at Arctic Cafe. And we, we pulled up to a brewery in a stick somewhere, which we only found out about this morning. And the guy said, don't you guys want to camp here? Because we've got a food festival coming on on Sunday. And we're on the river, up the hill is the brewery. I, we're, we're just content as it goes, because this is what van life's about. This is supporting local people, which is what the Cowboys is all about. Make stuff, drink stuff, cook stuff, go see the world. Because life is short, you have to keep on living.